Okay, then, um, this part, we'll talk about two theories derived from realism. The first one is balance of power, and the second one is uh, called security dilemma. What is balance of power? As I mentioned in the last video clip, in the last part, in an, because the international relations is anarchy, world have to protect themselves. That is, they have this is so called the um, self reliance system. They have to rely on themselves to protect their national security. So, state have to prevent the rise of a hegemon. Or make it simple. That is a state which have the chance to conquer them. They have to prevent the rise of this kind of threat to their security. In order to do so, um, they will seek for the so-called balancing. Balancing is a behavior that is balancing. Balancing is a behavior, and a balance of power is the theory. Okay, there are two forms of balancing. First is internal balancing. That is, the state uses its own math efforts to strengthen its national capacity. Say, um, a state would, like, um, build up its own economy in order to earn more money, so that those money can be used on building its own military capacity. That is internal balancing. And what is external balancing? External balancing is that some states who are very small, and then it is very, uh. It is not that possible for them to rely on themselves to counter the threats from another big state. Like it is very hard for South Korea to count on itself to balance against China. As far as their size is concerned, South Korea is very small. China is very big. So this kind of state, which cannot rely on themselves to balance another, they have to form alliance with others. Say South Korea, it's allied with USA,、uh, and then some U.S. army stationed in South Korea. The main purpose, of course,、um, apparently, the purpose for the U.S. army stationed in South Korea is to prevent from the attack from North Korea. But in fact, North Korea is very weak. South Korea by itself can.、Um, Prevent the attack from North Korea, and then even South Korea can rely on itself to, say, invade North Korea. The real purpose for some、uh, armies, some troops of America to station in South Korea, is to help South Korea to counter the threats from China. So there are two forms of balancing. Internal balancing and external balancing, and this kind of balancing mostly is、uh, rely on military power. So they are called hard balancing.、Um, there are some in the perspective after the post Cold War period, as there is an absence of hard balancing against U.S. Scholars find that maybe、um, some countries, even though they are allies of U.S. military, they are allies of U.S. They will use some methods called soft balancing. That is, use some non-military methods to counter the threats of U.S. Those non-military methods or soft balancing methods include territorial denial, entangling diplomacy, economic strengthening, or signal of resolve to balance. I give you example. This is a very good example of、uh, diplomatic or, let's say, um. Entangling diplomacy. That is use of diplomatic method to counterbalance U.S. to softly balance U.S. The best example is in two thousand three, U.S. would like to invade、um, Iraq on the excuse that Iraq poses Iraq is Iraq on the excuse that Iraq poses weapon of mass destruction. However, other states. Disagree with U.S. decision to invade Iraq. So when you, you when United States would like to ask um the United Nations Security Council here, this is the 
United States to Kyoto Council meeting. The meeting here. Then ask for the approval from the United Nations Security Council for approval for um, U.S. to send troops to um, attack Iraq. Then United Nations Security Council disapprove this um, request from the U.S. And then another method of diplomatic um, soft balancing is that um, United States after the Liverman um, attack, sent some army to here to invade um, Afghanistan because Afghanistan harbor um, Al Qaeda. Of course, you may know that the leader of Al Qaeda is Bin Laden, and Bin Laden is the one who orchestrated the Liverman attack. So, um, United Nations invade Afghanistan. However, the United States invasion of Afghanistan is a big threat to Russia and China because when United States troops stationed in Afghanistan, this um, the US Army, these teams of US armies would then be very close to Russia and China. So in order to counterbalance against United Nations United States um, they form a so-called Shanghai Cooperation Organization. I will talk about this organization in details. Um, of course, some of you knew this organization because you took the course uh, China Foreign Policy. But, but I will talk about this organization more in details when I taught when I teach China Foreign Policies in another course. However, I will give you a very brief idea that this organization is not a formal military alliance like the Triple Entente or Triple Alliance in the Second First World War. This is an informal alliance. Informal alliance. Um, not, not we get informally, we, can talk, we cannot say alliance. It's an, it's an informal military uh, cooperation organization. Just they cooperate militarily. A kind of cooperation organization. Uh, not in an alliance. But however, the formation of alliance is signal to the United States that, okay, you cannot expand your influence in our region. That is, here is called Central Asia region. You cannot expand your influence here. You, of course, uh, can station some troops in Afghanistan. However, don't use these troops to expand your influence in the Central Asia area. Otherwise, this organization will turn to be a formal ally, uh, military ally to counter your influence. So this is another method of entangling diplomacy. And for one it's called territorial denial. Uh, when United States would like to invade Iraq, here's Iraq. One of the very important approach to attack Iraq is, could, is uh, through aerial strategic bombardment, the Homza. Then the U.S. air base or U.S. airfield closest to Iraq is here in Turkey. However, Turkey opposed the United States to invade Iraq. So Turkey um, disallowed United States to um, this allow U.S. to use its air base, this U.S. air base, for launching attack against Iraq. So, all United States, all its jets, took off from this air base, cannot um, enter Iraq, and of course cannot join any military action in Iraq. This is signal like that United States. Okay, you could, you must stop here. You could not do something that I don't like. And also um, give extra burdens to U.S. because um, it is quite difficult. It's not quite difficult, but a little bit more difficult for U.S. to launch a strategic bombing, air attack on Iraq because they have to use some airport, air base, uh, which is not as close as this one. This one, of course, also not allowed to use because this country is Jordan. Also, do, do not allow U.S. to 
use this airbase to attack Iraq. So they have to use the airbase in UAE. Um, you may know which is UAE when you uh, take Emirates or visit Dubai, and some maybe some um, aircraft carrier here. The first from this airbase to Iraq um, is not as close as these two. So it, the decision of Turkey and Syria made the United States more difficult in attacking Iraq. This is one method of soft balancing. Of course, soft balancing is just um, some kind of long military method. But they will make you make, make a, yeah, other country feel embarrassed or make a country's action more difficult. This is the purpose of soft balancing. Um, according to Willis, if the balance of power can be well maintained, then peace could be preserved. For them, the outbreak of war is because of the big change in the balance of power. If there's a big change in the balance of power, then there will be a war. One of the best examples is um, the Second World War. The Second World War. 